All right, guys, welcome back to the shop. So we got all of our tenons cut on all of our long stretchers yesterday, and now we just have to go back in and actually fit them up. Because right now our tenons are quite rough on all the outer edges. We know that they're still oversized because they don't fit into the mortises that we cut yesterday. So now we just have to go in with the block plane and just touch them up until they fit. And basically we're just gonna go one stretcher at a time, removing a little bit of material from both sides of the tenon until we reach that nice perfect fit into the mortise. <laughs> Okay, so I thought that the last headboard was uh, pretty big. This one is a foot taller, and we have the length is only 12 inches off the bottom, which I believe on the other one, and we had 19 inches off the bottom just because we didn't need as much, you know, space in there. So this is going to be a very big and very heavy headboard. Uh, to the point of I have no idea how I'm going to get this together when it actually comes time to do the blue up. Uh, I may need to uh, get some help with that, which... It's gonna be interesting because uh, there is there's just, just so much there's just so much space. It is a giant thing, and so this isn't even as tall as I think that my customer really wanted to go. This is just kind of the maximum height that I showed them as an example, expecting them to want to go even taller because some of the samples that they'd sent me uh, were huge headboards, but. Uh, this is kind of his maximum size that I wanted to go, so that's kind of what I recommended. Then luckily they didn't uh, question it at all, so I got I got very lucky there. Because at least in this size, I can still reach to the top of it. If it was any taller, I wouldn't be able to reach up there anymore. So right now we got all the joints fitting up nicely. I will admit there's going to be a little bit of uh, shimming and filling work I'm going to have to do in some of the mortises, just because... Uh, you know, this much space, getting all this stuff aligned is kind of a pain in the butt. So just on the inside of the mortise, we'll just shim it out a little bit, just so it's a little bit of a tighter fit. But overall here, you know, even if I just went through and glued up the joints as they are now, they would hold just fine, especially when we add the pin in there, they'll be a perfectly strong joint. Luckily, in contrast to the headboard, this is our footboard leg, and you can see that it's gonna be a much easier time to get everything fitted up. So then the beautiful part with the footboard is once we get that part done, we already have all of our divider pieces all cut and nicely fitted up. So our footboard will actually be done once we get the long tenons on our stretchers here fitted up. One thing else I wanna mention about having the workbench out in the middle of the garage here is it's a way nicer to work with. Uh, as you can see, this is a pretty tall thing. And if I had the workbench where it was before, for one, I wouldn't just I just wouldn't have the space to do this, you know, put this together on the workbench. Plus, I'd be hitting that canoe that you guys have always seen kind of floating above my head there. If in the background of the videos you ever see that canoe rocking, you know that I've already hit it with something and it is it is terrifying because every time I hit that canoe with a piece of wood or something or a clamp or whatever, uh, I just know that that's just one more chance that I'm gonna knock it down and it's gonna come cascading down onto, onto my head and my table saw.
Okay, so I went to grab our footboard pieces to start fitting them up and I just realized that I made a mistake here. So, as you can see, when I cut the groove on our footboard pieces, I cut it all the way through. Now, this is not what I meant to do when I was making it. I meant to have a stopped groove the same way we did it on the headboard legs. But when I was cutting this groove, I realized I screwed up and I figured, okay, it's not that big of a deal. All I have to do on the footboard is just make sure I used a haunch tenon to then fill in that space. It's something I've done plenty of times before and I, wasn't, and I wasn't really that concerned about it. Except for the fact that on my one footboard stretcher, I completely forgot that I needed those haunch tenons. Now, so now the only way that I can make this leg piece work is by putting a filler piece on the top here. Now, for me personally, I think that that's gonna look really, really stupid. Because this is the footboard, that's gonna be a very noticeable area and it's gonna be quite obvious what happened there. So I think that what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to remake the legs because this is not a big piece of material. I have other pieces that I can use to easily replace this and there's still plenty of mater usable material in here that I can you know, use for other things. Okay, so we have a quick installation to do before we move on here. Uh, I got all mortises cut, I got everything you know, nicely set in here. I stopped for a quick lunch, and I was thinking that I'm kind of sick and tired of not being able to see around here. Because as you guys can probably tell from the video footage, it's pretty dark where I have the workbench sitting right now compared to where it was before. Before, I had one light that was pretty much directly over one end of the workbench, and the other end wasn't very well lit. Uh, I have these two video lights that I kind of move around as needed to light up the video, but overall they don't do a good job of actually adding light. They're okay for some, you know, very directional lighting, but they don't really fill the area with enough light. So I bought two more of these uh, commercial electric uh, four foot LED industrial lights from Home Depot. The exact same ones I have hanging up back there, and I'm just going to hang them on the roof right over where the workbench is right now. The trick here is I gotta make sure I hang them high enough so that the door doesn't hit them on its way up and down, but I don't think that that should be too hard. And the nice thing about these lights is that they're linkable, so all I have to do is plug one in to one of the sockets that's already up top there, and then I can connect them both together, and then we'll just have one line there, and then when I turn the light switches on at the door, these will turn on as well. So it makes life a lot easier. Alright, so it's definitely a heck of a lot brighter here and I made sure I got two lights that way I could kind of balance them because the two beams that are up there are, you know, they're 16 inches apart about. So I made sure I got one of them kind of staggered to the back, one staggered more to the front. So now I get minimal shadows in this area here, which is awesome. This is the best lit my workbench has ever been. So it's going to definitely make this whole thing a lot easier. Now I've yet to check it with the door, but when I was up there, I, it, it seems like it's going to be just fine. So I'm going to check it with the door real quick because I want to make sure I'm watching those lights when I open the door rather than, you know, coming back to it in a few days, opening the door as if nothing had changed, and then smashing both of those lights because that would suck. Oh, yeah, that's good. And because I know I'm gonna get the question, here is the box that you're looking for if you go to Home Depot. And yes, I do highly recommend these lights. As I said before, I've been rocking two of them on that back area there for a few years now. 
no issues with them. Now I will say that as far as video goes, they're not the best. Uh, I do sometimes notice some lines and not showing up in the video, which if you guys don't know what that means, it just means that the refresh rate of the light is different than the, what the camera is picking up. I do notice that every once in a while, but it's one of those things that's not that big of a deal for me. Someday when I have my dream shop that's all set up for me you know, making these videos and that, I'll definitely put some money into getting some good LED lights that don't have any kind of flickering to them. But for kind of your standard shop lighting, these ones are awesome. <laughs> Okay, so the footboard is all clamped up and it's looking good. The joints are coming together nice and cleanly. Everything is nicely aligned, as good as I'm gonna be able to get it with the tools and all that I have. Now, I don't want that to sound like it's not looking good. I did spend a lot of time trying to make sure that this actually looks good because it's all gonna be very visible. So that's that's the important thing to put there. It just, the important thing to understand is that this takes a lot longer than it probably should if I had some slightly better tools than that. So now the next thing I wanna get done is fitting up the dividers on the headboard. So we're kind of bouncing back and forth between the headboard and the footboard, uh, just purely because that's just the way that it works sometimes. So we've got all of our tenons fit into our legs. Now the last thing we need to do, the last tenons we need to cut anyway, are for those headboard dividers and we need to get those fitted up uh, somehow. Okay, so the headboard is now all together and I can just barely even rock this thing on the workbench here. Uh, it'll be a little bit better once we get the uh, four pipe clamps off there, but this is definitely not something that I'm going to be moving around the shop very easily by myself. So it's, it's gonna be interesting. The whole glue up of this thing is going to be 
interesting. There's, there's not really any other way to put it, other than this is going to be a pretty monumental challenge. But I'm always up for that. It's going to be interesting. So we still got a lot of work to do, but we are definitely nearing the finish line. Uh, it's This has been an intense project so far. Uh, I don't even know what part we're on in the actual video series, but it is, uh, it's going to be interesting. So as always, guys, I do hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're enjoying this project as much as I am. And as always, guys, I will see you in the next one.